you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, come on. We got things. We got business to handle. We got business to handle. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Can we hear it up for Tim Walls? Isn't he amazing? He's gonna be the most incredible vice president. All right, so it is good to be back and to be with so many incredible leaders. I love you. <laughs> Governor Gretchen Whitmer, thank you for your for your friendship, your sisterhood, and your leadership, and we are going to do this together. <laughs> Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist, thank you so much. His parents are over there. And the members of Congress, including Senator Debbie Stabenow, my dear friend. And your next United States Senator, Representative Elisa Slocken. We're going to get that done. Mayor Mike Duggan, thank you for the warm welcome always. And of course, it is so good to be with the president of the United Auto Workers, my dear friend, Sean Fain. <laughs> and last year, last week, it was my honor. It feels like last year. Last week, it was my great honor to accept the endorsement of the United Auto Workers. And the UAW has always worked to lift up the working people of our nation. Some help over there. I need we need a medic over there, please. There should be medics in each corner. We're good. Okay. All right. Look, let's all take care of each other and look for, look out for each other, all right? That's who we are. We look out for each other. Okay. So as I said to Sean, as I talked to Sean about this, this election is gonna be a fight. We like a good fight. When you know what you stand for, you know what to fight for, we know what we stand for. So I'm so proud to have UAW by my side because y'all know how to fight and you know how to win. Today, I also bring greetings from our incredible President Joe Biden. That's right. Joe. Joe, 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 Joe. That's right. And I know we are all deeply, deeply grateful to Joe for his lifetime of service to our nation. And we thank you, Joe Biden, each and every day for all you are and all you still have yet to do. what you said. <laughs> so, Michigan, this has been a big week. Yeah. On Monday, I officially became the Democratic nominee for President of the United States. And yesterday, I announced my running mate in this campaign, Governor Tim Walsh. And as you just heard, he has an incredible record as governor of the great state of Minnesota. And to those who know him best, some people are just getting to know him, but I'm going to tell you, you got to know him real quick because he's incredible. 
He's a serious, serious man. He has been a serious leader, and he loves our country. And you know, I've talked to some of the people who know him best, like his wife, Gwen. And to Gwen, Tim Walz's husband. To his, to his kids, Hope and Gus, he is dad. To his fellow veterans, he is Sergeant Major Walls. To the people of Southern Minnesota for 12 years, he was a congressman. To his former high school students, he is Mr. Walls. And to his former high school football players, he was coach. And in 90 days, the nation will know Coach Walls by the title Vice President of the United States. It is so good to be back in Michigan. And listen, I am clear, the path to the White House runs right through this state. And with your help, we will win in November. We will win. And I know we are all clear about what we are up against. As many of you know, before I was elected Vice President, before I was elected as a United States Senator, I was elected Attorney General, and before that, elected District Attorney, and before that, I was a courtroom prosecutor. In those roles, I took on perpetrators of all kinds. Predators who abused women, fraudsters, who ripped off consumers, scammers who broke the rules for personal gain. So hear me, Detroit, when I say, I know Donald Trump's type. I've been dealing with them my whole career. For example, as Attorney General of California, I took on one of the country's largest for-profit colleges that scammed students. Well, Donald Trump ran a for-profit college that scammed students. You remember that? As a prosecutor, I specialize in cases of sexual abuse. Well, Donald Trump was found liable for committing sexual abuse. As Attorney General, I held the big Wall Street banks accountable for fraud. Well, Donald Trump was just found guilty of fraud. 34 counts, to be exact. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what? Here, hold on. Here's the thing. The courts are going to handle that. We're going to beat them in November. We're going to beat them in November. Okay? We'll beat them in November. We'll handle that. But all that to say, in this campaign, I proudly put my record against his any day of the week. Any day of the week. But make no mistake, our campaign, this campaign, is not just about us versus Donald Trump. It's bigger than that. It is about two very different visions for the future of our nation. One, ours, focused on the future, and the other, focused on the past. And Michigan, we, we here fight for the future. We fight for the future. We fight for a future where every worker has the freedom to join a union. Where every senior can retire with dignity. A future with affordable housing, affordable child care, affordable health care, and paid leave. A 
future where we build a broad-based economy where every American has an opportunity to own a home, to start a business, and to build wealth. And understand, in this fight, we are joyful warriors. Because while fighting for a brighter future may take hard work, we all here know hard work is good work. Hard work is good work. We believe in a future where we lower the cost of living for America's families. So they have a chance, not just to get by, but to get ahead. Because look, while our economy is doing well by many measures, prices for everyday things like groceries are still too high. You know it and I know it. When I was Attorney General, I went after price-fixing schemes. And when I am President, it will be my day one priority to fight to bring down prices to take on the big corporations that engage in illegal price gouging, take on corporate landlords that unfairly raise rents on working families, to take on big pharma and cap the cost of prescription drugs for all Americans. That is the work we will do together. And all of this to say, unlike Donald Trump, I will always put the middle class and working families first. Because Coach Walls and I know the middle class built this great country of ours. And when the middle class is strong, America is strong. And look, as we move our nation forward, Donald Trump intends to take our nation backward. Just look at his Project 2025 agenda. Project 2025. And please do check out Project 2025, because I'm telling you, it is a plan. It is a plan to weaken America's middle class. Project 2025, if he is elected. I'm here because we believe in democracy. Everyone's voice matters, but I am speaking now. I am speaking now. So Project 2025, look, if he is elected, Donald Trump intends to give tax breaks to billionaires and big corporations. He intends to cut Social Security and Medicare. He intends to surrender our fight against the climate crisis. And he intends to end the Affordable Care Act. You know what? If you want Donald Trump to win, then say that. Otherwise, I'm speaking.
because we know what that would look like. And again, understand, Donald Trump intends to end the Affordable Care Act and take us back to a time when insurance companies had the power to deny people with pre-existing conditions. We all remember what that looked like. And we're not going back. We're not going back. Our fight is a fight for the future, and it is a fight for freedom. Across our nation, we are witnessing a full-on attack on hard-fought, hard-won fundamental freedoms and rights, and we will not stand for it. Attacks on the freedom to vote, attacks on the freedom to be safe from gun violence, the freedom to breathe clean air and drink clean water, the freedom to love who you love openly and with pride, and the freedom of a woman to make decisions about her own body and not have her government tell her what to do. Generations, generations of Americans before us led the fight for freedom. Now the baton is in our hands, each and every one of us. So we, who believe in the sacred freedom to vote, will finally pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act and the Freedom to Vote Act. We who believe in the freedom to live safe from gun violence will finally pass an assault weapons ban, universal background checks, and red flag laws. We who believe in the freedom to organize will pass the PRO Act and put an end to union busting once and for all. And we who believe in reproductive freedom will fight for a woman's right to choose, remembering what Donald Trump did to pick three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention that they would take away this freedom, and they did as he intended. We who are paying attention to the fact that now over 20 states in our country have a Trump abortion ban, many with no exceptions, even for rape and incest. And we all know if he wins, he would sign a national abortion ban to outlaw abortion in every state, and that would include the great state of Michigan. But we're not going back. about who we are that is a bit different from the folks on the other side. We trust women to know what is in their best interest and not have their government telling them what to do. And when I am President of the United States and Congress passes a bill to restore reproductive freedoms, I will sign it into law. So, Michigan, here's the thing. So much, so much, so much is on the line in this election. And we got to remember, you know, we, we, knew, we knew who he is and what he was about in 16 and in 20, but there's also something else that has happened recently that we really have to prioritize in our mind about the danger we're looking at. Last month, the United States Supreme Court basically just told the former president, who has been convicted of fraud, that going forward, he will be immune no matter what he does 
in the White House. But think about that. Think about that. Think about what that means. Think about what that means. The man has openly vowed, if reelected, that he will be a dictator on day one. Think about what that means when he said that he will even, quote, terminate the Constitution of the United States. Because let us be very clear, someone who suggests we should terminate the Constitution of the United States should never again stand behind the seal of the President of the United States. Never again. That's right. So here's the thing, to your point. When it comes down to all of the things that are important about this, I think the most important thing that brings, I love you back. And <laughs> Listen, one of the things that I know brings us all out today and always is we love our country. We love our country. We love our country. And I do believe it is the highest form of patriotism to fight for the ideals of our country. That is how we preserve the promise of America. After all, the promise of America, think about it, is what makes it possible for Tim Walls and me to be together on this stage today. Think about it. Think about that. Two middle-class kids, one a daughter of Oakland, California, who was raised by a working mother. I had a summer job at McDonald's. <laughs> the other, a son of the Nebraska Plains, who grew up working on a farm. Only in America is it possible for them together to make it all the way to the White House. Only in America. Only in America. So we are running this campaign on behalf of all Americans, from red states to blue states, from the heartland to the coasts. And when elected, I promise you we will govern on behalf of all Americans. I promise that. So I'll close with this. Michigan, ultimately in this election, we each face a question. We each face a question. What kind of country do we want to live in? A country of freedom, compassion and rule of law, or a country of chaos, fear, and hate. And the beauty of our democracy, the beauty of our democracy, we each have the power to answer that question. We each have the power to answer that question. The power is with the people. So in the next 90 days, we need you to use your power. We need you to knock on some doors. We need you to register folks to vote. We need you to organize and energize and mobilize and make your voices heard. So Michigan, I ask you, are you ready to make your voices heard? Do we believe in freedom? Do we believe in opportunity? Do we believe in the promise of America? And are we ready to fight for it? And when we fight, we win. God bless you.
Bless you.